reporting this morning about an hour ago. They are reporting that Mikhail Rodriguez, widely known as the Guyanese critic, was Monday morning charged with inflicting grievous bodily harm. Rodriguez is accused of attacking Bobby's businessman Brian Passard with, his, with a firearm while at the Montreux Lounge and Bar on September the 29, 2024. Rodriguez has denied the allegations and was placed on $100,000 bail. Um, and they say more tonight on HGP Nightly News. So the critic, who know everything about everybody else, the man accused him of assaulting him with his firearm. We saw the video circulating. So he's charged for inflicting grievous violence. The same night and the police, oh, she, she gave a statement that he was in bed with she. So I can't see now, I put the major, I wanted for this thing too. So I, and there was no way wrong. There was, I was in my bed, I was sleeping. I don't know nothing about the shooting or nothing. Me know nothing about this the, the, the story. Nothing, nothing, nothing me know about the story. What, what, you, then think, I hear, what you think? Cause the police to place you at the crime scene. Cause I will run from them. They shot behind you sometime recently? Yeah. Tell me about that incident. Tell me about that incident. The first time when them come the morning. I don't uncover their own brain or something. Because you can't put pato. In handcuff and It's a criminal charge. No, you know, man saying you can't put Patu in handcuff. This is the kind of ignorance he's got to deal with, Banner. It's a criminal charge, nonetheless. Everybody's go through the process. Some are given, me not ask nobody for nothing. When they tell me handcuff, me not make no resistance. Me take my handcuff and me do my thing. But the car went to the washroom. This is the word that she used. She thinks that they were being disgusting. When she would have already did their little investigation in there, that's when she called because she said she know my son will come home and tell me exactly what um, went on at the school. So before he comes and tell me, she called to inform me. I said, okay. She said, um, you know, some little touching thing, but she thinks they were being disgusting. Anyway, I wait until my child came because it was almost close to school for him to be um, picked up from school. And when my son came home, I asked my son exactly, say to me exactly what happened. By this time, my whole body is shaking. I am, um, I, first of all, I don't even know how. Welcome back to the flight. Hit that subscription button, buddy, and stay updated with everything that's trending in Guyana and the diaspora tanks in a move that will further strengthen the already strong bilateral relations between the two countries prime minister of india narendra modi is expected to visit guyana next month a senior government official confirmed to diana times that preparations are being put in place for the high level visit in november this newspaper understands that prime minister modi's trip to diana will be a bilateral visit as well as for a caricom india summit which will be hosted in Georgetown. The Indian leader is expected to be in Guyana for two days. Prime Minister Modi's visit to Georgetown coincides with his travel to neighboring Brazil, where he is slated to attend the G20 summit being held from November 18th minus 19 in Rio. The visit by the Indian leader comes on the heels of several high-level visits by senior officials of the Guyana government in recent years including President Dr. Irfan Ali, Vice President Dr. Bayad Jadio and Prime Minister Mike Phillips along with a host of cabinet ministers. The government of Guyana has distanced itself from comments made by former President, Prime Minister and Guyana's current ambassador to the United States of America, Sam Hines on the Exxon Mobil oil contract. In two separate letters to the media earlier this month, the ambassador encouraged Guyanese to rejoice over the paltry proceeds being received from Exxon and even ventured to insinuate that the country benefits from the lack of ring fencing. In his second letter, Heinz also suggested that the royalties being paid by Exxon makes up for the taxes that the oil companies do not pay. On Thursday, General Secretary of the People's Progressive Party and Vice President Barrett Jagdeo made it clear that the ambassador's views do not align with that of the parties. Jagdeo argued that the media, in particular Kaitour News, has lost focus on the fact that leader of the Alliance for Change is being paid by Exxon, a glaring conflict of interest. He however highlighted that the newspaper has jumped on the former president for sharing his thoughts on the issue. 
They just brushed off this whole question of lack of integrity from this conflict of interest. They just brush it off. It's gone. Kai Tor News forget about that. The man is working for Exxon now and heading a political party that's in parliament. He collecting money every day from Exxon they cuss the PPP and poor Sam Hines because he muses and shares his thoughts publicly what he thinks, the VP said. Whitford Burke stated a senior PPP official who heads a department of the PPP government of Diana has been stopped at an airport in the U.S. and interrogated by FBI agents. The Diana government has been silent on this embarrassing incident which occurred recently. President Arfan Ali should explain why his government failed to disclose this significant development to the Guyanese public. Moreover, why are so many PPP government of Diana officials being flagged for money laundering and other financial crimes and are being stopped and interrogated by by U.S. federal agents. Meanwhile, CGID understands that the Guyana police force may be in danger of being sanctioned shortly by U.S. authorities. More to come. Anytime a senior member of the police force is facing allegations of the type that have beset Assistant Commissioner of Police, Calvin Brutus, the country has a major problem on its hands as it relates to law enforcement. To navigate this ticket of course it may be useful to examine the major claims of the two sides. In its affidavit to the court seeking to block Mr. Brutus' departure to the U.S., the state asserted that there are 240 charges pending against him for money laundering and other serious financial crimes. Among the disclosures in the affidavit in response to Mr. Brutus' application to travel was that the state through a high court order had frozen some nine accounts held at Republic Bank Limited, Demerara Bank Limited and the New Building Society in the names of Mr. Mr. Brutus, his wife, and their minor son. Combined, those accounts held $500 million accumulated over a period of one year. Controversial social media talk show host Mikhail Rodriguez appeared in court this morning and was slapped with a charge of causing grievous bodily harm. He is accused of using his firearm to hit Burbis businessman Brian Prasad across the face in the Montreux nightclub in Kitty on the 29th of September. Rodriguez has denied the assault allegations but was granted bail in the sum of $100,000 when he appeared in court this morning. He was handcuffed and removed from the courtroom after his hearing and had to remain in the prison holding facility until his bail was paid. Businessman Brian Prasad filed a police report three weeks ago detailing the incident. He said he was with relatives in the nightclub and was standing at the bar when he saw the accused whipping out a gun and hitting him across the face and head, causing him serious injuries. Rodriguez has claimed that he had been attacked by someone in the club, but it later appeared as though he might have retaliated against the wrong person. I don't uncover their own your brain or something because you can't put patu in a handcuffed patu stool. It's a criminal charge. No, you a man saying you can't put patu in handcuff. This is the kind of ignorance I've got to deal with, man. It's a criminal charge, nonetheless. Everybody's go through the process. Some are given me to ask nobody for nothing. When they tell me handcuff, me make no resistance. Me take my handcuff and me do my thing. I am saying, it is clear as day, nobody could come and dispute the fact that I am not offered any favors. Because people just make it out like me and the government is friend. You understand? And the judicial system is corrupt and it, that's how they make it. It's the same judicial system. I'm saying the system works. It shows that the system works. It works so much over that it well worked well for me. So me and know everybody's saying what I gonna say no. Cause if I had the connections, what they claiming I got. Yeah, son. People, people, people don't get the people, people don't get charged. <laughs> How me get charged? How I big and bad and powerful and get charged? Obviously. The truth is coming to light. I'm a regular citizen like everybody else. It is just that I'm outspoken more than anybody else. You understand? No special treatment afforded to me or requested from me. Simple. Right? So just making y'all know and a weary. Well, me I make you know, you see. You can see the picture just now. We can get into all of the just. As many of you might not have seen or heard about him, but this morning, let me tell you what the breaking news is. Hold on, hold on, bear with me, bear with me, bear with me. Watch with me a while. The breaking news this morning is that the Guyanese critic, 
rent your coat. Let me read what um, H HGP Nightly News is reporting this morning about an hour ago. They are reporting that Mikhail Rodriguez, widely known as the Guyanese critic, was Monday morning charged with inflicting grievous bodily harm. Rodriguez is accused of attacking Bobby's businessman Brian Prasad with, his, with a firearm while at the Montre Lounge and Bar on September the 29, 2024. Rodriguez has denied the allegations and was placed on $100,000 bail. Um, and they say more tonight on HDP Nightly News. So the critic, who know everything about everybody else, the man accused him of assaulting him with his firearm. We saw the video circulating. So he's charged for inflicting grievous bodily harm. And he, he appeared in court this morning and coughed. And uh, he was put on $100,000 bill. But here it is. The allegation is that this he inflicted this grief, this um, bodily harm with his licensed firearm. That is what the allegation is. That he used his firearm to beat this man. Bloody. He somebody lashy in the head with the bottle. That's critic. And critic, I uh, think, assume that is what was being said. That is the allegation. I don't know. And he beat this man more seriously. Try to put in the car trunk. Policeman turn up. We talk about it. A police sergeant. They kick it at the man. Jewelry in the hand. And his explanation was that the jury just fall in the yard just like that. Right? Something. So he, he went to court this morning and he is put on bail. The question, however, is since the firearm was alleged to have been used in this in committing this offense, have the police, because at the time when it would happen, they didn't take with the firearm, they allowed the man to go with the firearm. We saw that in the video. When the sergeant asked him to hand over the firearm, he tell the sergeant some nonsense. He did not hand over the firearm. So the question is, did the police seize the firearm since then? And have they initiated the process to have the license revoked? Because that is right away. You write him to show cause why the firearm license should not be revoked. Let me, let me teach you all. You can't just take away the gun. The fact that the gun was used in the commission of this crime, it should be there as an exhibit. It should be lodged with the police as an exhibit. At the same time, the commander commander should write the critic and outline it is alleged that you use this firearm number so 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 and you assaulted it assault this man with it you were charged and i don't regards to this you are to show cause why the firearm issued to you this number and everything should not be revoked he has to show cause you can't just go slow and take away the firearm you will take away the firearm without giving the opportunity to show cause you're gonna go to court and he's likely to win the case. So let me advise these commanders. The firearm should be lodged because the firearm was allegedly used in commission of this crime. Inflicting, and then let me let me tell you further, the fact that he's, um, he pleaded not guilty, it means that is a summary charge they instituted. They instituted a summary charge. Well, you can't blame them because if you talk about inflicting grievous bodily harm, I guess it's depending on depending on what the medical certificate would have said that would have determined what charge is to be instituted. But you institute a summary charge, and you want to know again. We teach it. You want to know how I know this. We know this because he was made to plead to the charge. If it had, if it had been an indictable charge, the magistrate would have said you the charge is indictable and you are not required to plead. Somebody would have sworn to the information, and then they would have magistrate would have read it to him and told him that the charge is indictable, you're not required to plead. And therefore, therefore, the fact that he has pleaded to the charge, it means that a summary charge was instituted. Policemen and others understand, understand, we teach it, we teach it. But let me bring Mr. Conway to have say on this. CC, cut critic, charge, put on bail. What are your views, my brother? Well, I'm, I'm happy at least that they took some action here. But like you, I, I'm concerned about the firearm. And I'm wondering how a person like Critic, with the kind of antics that he displaying on the television and elsewhere, how in heaven's name he got a firearm? What, what, did, did he ob obtain it from Shift Chanjapal Drive? Did he obtain it from a, from Young Street? Did he obtain it from a house in Rob Street? Did, 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 did he obtain it from a from a doctor in Lamaha Street? Did he obtain it from a 
a building northwest of the Breakdown Police Station? Or did he pay a 1.5? And you're talking about revoke if they're revoking, they may they may got pay back the 1.5 if, if, if that, that was the case. And I saw him in, 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 in handcuff, you know, his hands in front of him. And the, the recommended way is that when you handcuffing people, you handcuff them behind the back. I remember in the Michael Jackson case, as soon as the judge said the doctor was found guilty, police appeared from nowhere, hands behind his back and took him away. So the, the recommended place, place is to handcuff them with their hands behind, behind the back, lying in front of them. They could easily do all, all kind of gymnastics and put you in worries. But I'm happy at least they, they take some action, but critically, firearm. Firearm that was designed to kill in the hands of persons who, who I don't think should have been given any firearm. Well, in my days when I wrote, when, if I had to write him, I would have uh, mentioned that he has displayed intemperate habits because that is what the law says. The law, I think it's 1605, the firearm act, um, I might be wrong with this, um, the, the, the chapter, but it says if one, this, that is a ground for refusal, intemperate habits. Now, Denny's, yes, um, when we talk about the difference between summary and indictable charges, they're a little bit more than that. Because if it's an indictment, well, let me talk with summary first. If it's a summary charge, then the charge entered the court via a, a, a complaint um, without oath, right? A complaint without oath is made, and that is what the document that is used to um, commence the process in the court. Charge is filed, complaint without oath. If it's an indictable charge, then it's not a complaint without oath. An information upon oath. So in an indictable charge, the policeman who is instituting the charge, the complainant or, or the, the, the person who is reading, he will go there and he will swear to the information, the informant. He will swear to the information. So it's not a complaint without oath, it's for summary matters. And when we talk about indictable matters, you swear to the information before the magistrate. And as I've said before, if it's an indictable charge, the magistrate will read the charge to you. And then the magistrate has to tell you that the charge is indictable. You're not required to plead. And then after that, they're going to talk about bail. Now, if the charge is a summary charge, after the magistrate reads the charge to you with the section and all of that, then the magistrate will inform you, right? The magistrate will ask you, what is your plea? And then you will plea whether it's guilty or not guilty as a case may be. So understand, be teaching. Be teaching, I'm sure. Not only for the civil Nearly a month after he was abducted on Main Street, Georgetown, the police are no closer to finding Joshua David, much to the anguish and disappointment of his family and relatives. David, called Bricks, passed another milestone yesterday and family and friends posted pictures and memories of him on several social media sites. David's kidnapping on September 26 had been captured on video by someone in a vehicle who then forwarded it to reporters. In the video, five men could be seen pushing David across Main Street as he attempted to fight them off. Months after he was shot and killed during the robbery, police have issued wanted bulletins for two men in relation to the murder of 61-year-old Aubrey Richardson. In the wanted bulletin issued on Sunday, the Guyana police force said Antoine Sampson, 20, and Samuel Brown, 23, are wanted for questioning in relation to the murder which occurred on August 24, 2024. Their last known addresses are Caneville, Grove, East Band Demerara and Yarrow Cabra, Linden Sosdike Highway, respectively. Reports are that Richardson was fatally wounded wounded during the robbery at a popular shop in Yarrowbacra, Soulsdyke, Linden. At the time, Richardson was at the shop having a conversation with one of his friends when the bandits arrived, posing as customers. He was then held at gunpoint and shot to his back after which the bandits proceeded to rob the shop owner before making good their escape. Richardson succumbed to his injuries on September 5, 2024. Police said any individual with information on the whereabouts of Samson and Brown is asked to contact the nearest police station. Well, you are accused well, well, of September, September 5, 2024 murder at Yarrakabra. What is your yeah. response? Well, for me, most I could, I, I, I could say, I was in my bed with this with the boy who did this incident. I was in my bed with his with him sister. I don't know nothing about this shooting or about this incident. I was in my bed so with this incident happened in front by the lady, she grandson, also lived with one of my auntie. So I was in my bed with him sister been sleeping 
Mm-hmm. So my auntie and she grandson come and wake me up the night and telling me, you hear your brother la think think think. So I say man, so I say man, my brother la got try there. So I don't know nothing about this, this story and why I running from the the police. I just afraid about the interrogation and the brutalizing. Like I continue running from the police, but. I see I innocent to this thing. I, I, I very innocent. Cause I know me when there and I don't know nothing about it. And for feel now I see myself on the major and I know me do this. And I know I innocent. And I know to myself I do this. I innocent. And I glad if I could get justice out of the story. It don't make sense I go in jail and got sitting down so long. Nothing I don't know about it. Don't make sense. So it, and it's this why I just think Said, and I'm glad if other people could, you know, stand up and just help me out with this sick. I can't understand. Said, also, his sister gave a statement to the station. Also, I, I was in bed with she. Said, so, the same night, and the police, so she, she gave a statement that I was in bed with she. So, I can't see now. I put the major, I wanted for this thing too. Said, and there was no way wrong there. Was, I was in my bed, I was sleeping. I don't know nothing about the shooting or nothing. Me know nothing about this the, the, this story. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Me know about the story. What, what, you, think, I hear, what you think caused the police caused to the police place, you the place you were the crime scene? Because I run from them. They shot behind you sometime shot recently? Behind you sometime recently? Yeah. Tell me, Tell me about that incident. The first time when them come the morning and take me out my bed, this is when I run from them. Yeah, this is when I run from them. This is when them take, take, harass my girl, chuck off my girl, thing, cry she the station, thing, she, she was she bare towel, she ran she bare towel, when them take she the station. So, mm-hmm. when them take she the station, I I I've been still running. So them telling she I going to came into the station. I going to turn in myself just now. You're gonna see somewhere going to come. So I think you can see somewhere gonna come and you can say he went there and he didn't do the shooting. So Miguel says so oh me boy could say he went there and he didn't do the shooting and me boy went in bed with me lie down. Sleeping. So is there's the thing then she end up she, she end up she get loose. Everybody think I say I think I I still been one turning myself, but I said I can't turn myself because if I turn myself into the police and go and brutalize me for talk for me supposed to talk and I, I want I talk I don't I can't talk I can't lie on people turn I can't lie on myself I can't say car to shoot the man and I know was there I I can't I went there I know was wrong I went in my bed I can't say so. From the point of view there, I can't say is if this person or the person or I don't know if it's Antoine or not. Yeah, it's like though I can't say cause I know what's wrong there. I was in my bed. Right. Right. So, so do you plan I, to surrender to the cops? If you plan to turn yourself into the police? Yes, yes, it's best I do that before, you know, and I'm glad for justice before I got going sitting down too long. And think I'm glad for turn myself in before it got be worse, before then got run me, shoot me, kill me, then you never find out this whole problem. I was innocent to everything, then I want to know what everybody going to do for me. or would do for me, family, when you don't do what you got to do me. So this is what he's saying, because I, I went to my bed, I can't say nothing. Well, I could say I was in my bed. I'll see sister was there too. This is Antoine's sister. This is Antoine's sister. Yeah, Antoine's sister. So you're Antoine's so brother-in-law. You're Antoine's brother-in-law. Yeah, he's the brother-in-law. Very well. Very well. Um, is there anything um, else you like? Is there anything else you like? Add? Well, last time when them came back for me, I went by 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 my workplace, been walking, and. Two men end up coming in my workplace and end up ask my boss to me. So them never come confess to me boss as them is no police. But them just come, them ask Samuel. My boss tell them wait, I come and I go in a call Samuel for ya. 
Well, so as my boss coming for call me, he know them the two police been walking behind me. He didn't know them was police. So when them come now, when he come and tell me my son, well, two guys is out there for reach you. The, the two guys was done behind he walking coming. I see one of them fully on. See one of them I don't see one of them like like them don't look like them one beat me. How oh, these man look like I don't see like this man therefore like brutalize me. See it so I just run, one of them in the bus shot behind me, I still continue running, I ain't stop. Then them start rope on, on me boss and telling me boss you make the man run. So me boss say man, y'all never come face yourself to me, tell me y'all is police. Y'all say y'all come to see Samuel. So this is the last time I run from then and then the next day I end up seeing myself on the media and I tell myself I innocent. It don't make sense I run, I innocent. I innocent, so what, I ain't went here. What would you like to say finally to the family of Bob Richardson, the man who died? Well, what well, I have said to them, I just want to be honest with me and see with me. And when I told myself, I just want everybody to be seen with me and let, let, let just be walk free. Like, I don't know. I, I just beg, i glad if I could. You know me want nobody feel like you know like I know something I don't know. I was in my bed. I can't talk nothing, I can't talk nothing against nobody. I was in my bed. So for the people for you, for the my family, I glad for like speak to somebody car. Me want go man saying don't go remand for what I don't know the, 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 like you know, they're gonna just tamper with me brains, you know, for no ID in there. For no for do I don't even know about nothing and I didn't there. So I just, you know, I glad yeah, if somebody could work it out with me, somebody could help me out. You know, cause I innocent. So I see myself on the media every day I just sit down and I just cry. Cause I know I innocent. I mean want nobody for do me nothing, me want no police to do me nothing. And so I just find a way for make it easier and do it the right way. But you know. All right, Samuel. I, I wish you the best. I wish you the best. So, how I see it, plus, I is done. I still a job look I is only 20. This year, I, this year, I end up to me 20. Next year, I'm going to go in 21. So, I, the little man is work. I don't trouble nobody, but I still glad for justice, and I was glad, still glad for everybody still looking to my story. So, I, and be with, and be straight with me, car. I don't know nothing. I went in my bed. Do you have a lawyer? Yeah, the you aunt shooter lawyer? was in my bed. Plus, also my auntie, I'm glad if they could attack, but I don't know if they could attack or what. But even to the lady with the incident happened to, she grandson, even to he too, come and wake me up. I got he as witness too. Do you have an attorney? Do you have an attorney? If I have a... A lawyer, a lawyer. A lawyer, a lawyer. No, and it's they, that's what I don't want to turn in myself if I don't have a liar. That's what I say. I, if I turn in myself, I want a liar. I want going with a liar. So I come here, I want going in jail and got there for two, three, four years for what I don't know about. I can't understand. I can't. If the fuck happened and then they never find out, I know I could sue everybody. Everybody I could sue. Because right, for no way innocent and what the time where I have to go and sit down and just there. Who I don't know about. So, all right. By the all point right. of view, I was glad for get justice out of the story and you know, be safe. And I pray every day too. All right. So you are going to surrender to the police. That's what you said earlier. Yes. Hmm. I think that would be the best thing to do instead of running from them and them having to shoot behind you now. Parent disheartened by school's initial response to report. Minister of Education Priya Manik Chen yesterday said that the ministry has launched an investigation into allegations that two students of St. Joseph High School were sexually assaulted in the school's toilet. Manik Chen told Stabrope News last evening that ministry officials have met both the alleged victims and perpetrators and that comprehensive resolutions were arrived at. 
She declined to comment further, but Stabrobe News understands that the alleged perpetrators, five fifth formers and one fourth former, will face the consequences for their actions. Stabrobe News also contacted the school's headmistress who said the matter was being investigated by the ministry. Meanwhile, the mother of one of the alleged victims confirmed to this newspaper last evening that she had a meeting with officials of the Ministry of Education yesterday and needed time to process the information. Here, the prince, I'm sitting here with a parent. Um, well, I just learned of the matter earlier today um, with some sexual allegation or a temporary or whatever is the allegation out of St. Joseph High School. And um, Shauna, what's going on? Shauna, how y'all don't give me these stories? Eh? And so I'm sitting here with... I'm sitting here with with the parent and so um you know you might hear from her in the background i got to say share the link right son all right share the link <laughs> listen i used to be in the classroom here so i'm here with this parent and how long will this this incident happen thursday. Thursday. thursday on yes so exactly what happened tell me on Thursday, I received a call from teacher Karen Burr-Smith. She called me and she told me that um, I'm calling you because there's an incident occurred at the school and I think the children were being disgusting. But Lakari went to the washroom. This is the word that she used. She thinks that they were being disgusting. When she would have already did their little investigation in there, that's when she called because she said she know my son will come home and tell me exactly what um, went on at the school. So before he comes and tell me, she called to inform me. I said, okay. She said, um, you know, some little touching thing, but she thinks they were being disgusting. Anyway, I wait until my child came because it was almost close to school for him to be um, picked up from school. And when my son came home, I asked my son exactly, say to me exactly what happened. By this time, my whole body is shaking. I am, um, I, first of all, I don't even know how to accept the entire information. The car said, You're gonna call the name of the child. Yeah, my child said, my child said, Mommy, this is what happened. He went to Miss Bart Smith, told him, You are. Um, you're not uniform, your shirt is out of the pants. Go to the washroom and fix yourself properly. He went into the washroom. He said when he went into the washroom, he saw some all the boys there and they looked as though they were cornering a child. He said anyway, he continued going into the washroom. He said while he's walking into the stall, a big boy come and push him into the washroom, farther into the washroom. Mm. He said, and the boy told him to take down his pants. And he said he, the boy locked the door behind him. So he told the boy, told him to take down his pants, zip down his pants. He said, no, I'm not going to zip down my pants. He said the boy then reached over to zip down his pants. So he said, mommy, I started fighting and I started pushing to open the door. He said, and when I tried to open the door, I realized that my force is not enough to open this door. He said, then he later realized that the door was jammed. The other boys on the outside had the door jammed. So he said, Mommy, by this time, I'm so angry and I want to fight this boy off. He said, but Mommy, in this situation, all I'm thinking about is if I fight this child, if I fight this boy, they're going to overpower me and they're going to really get the opportunity to bother me because this is what these children telling my child that they're going to bother him. This is what they're saying. My son said he ended up managing to fight him off because by this time, there's a other child in the next stall that they're targeting. So one, the, one of the boys ended up jumped the stuff. So he said, that's what made the force remove from the door. So he said, the, the force removed, he'd run out. And now an other child came to work, walking towards him, pulled down his zip and asked him, you want to see how gay he could get? What? My son said, he said, what are you talking about? And he said, he dodged him and run. Run to the teacher. St. Joseph High School. Which school is it? St. Joseph High School. Run to the teacher and complain. He also said there's a teacher, Veronica. When he told her about the incident, she laughed. And he said he's watching her. And then she said, I mean, I know it's serious. But it's so funny to think that they would do something like that. What is funny about that? What is funny about a child coming to tell you 
that by the grace of God. And later on, told me that they, the, he said that they had an uh, investigation. They sent home one child right away, there and then. And I asked my child this story when he came home several times because I wanted to see the consistency. No, but, 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 but hold me. Let me go back. A teacher called you from the school. Yes. And told you mm -hmm. it had a little thing with your child. Yes. Some and little believed, touch and she believed. She believed they were being disgusting. Being disgusting by you when going to rape your child. child? When touching a child is being disgusting. Not only touching and telling you're going to buggy and black and laughing in a toilet. Exactly. Oh my gosh. She said there's a I said I I I always feel like I want to come. No. Anyway, school had already over. She said it already sent for a child. She said there's a meeting at 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock couldn't come fast enough the next day. So at 10 o'clock, I had a lawyer accompany me. I had my son with my siblings accompany me and I went down to the school. Mm. Nervous. As nervous as I was, I tried to be calm. I tried to be calm. Miss Karen Bart Smith start off the meeting by saying, Saying the boys were joking. Stick a pin. Miss Bruce, based on what my son told me, there's no fucking joke. And I will curse on your life because I am expressing myself with the same exact expression I did at the fucking school. Because you will not use the word joke for a matter that is that sensitive. Because if you say a joke, you are debunking the fact that my child. So your son could have come home and tell you that somebody's blocking a bathroom. Calm down. I know you'll breathe. You got one son. Breathe. One child is work hard. And tell you that he went to school. And some boys bully he. And the teacher will say joke. Say no, but what I'm saying, mm -hmm. if he didn't fight enough. And so, people came at the so, same time. What are these big boys doing in this so, bathroom? So you're dismissing everything that went on, even your own so-called investigation that y'all had the day prior to tell me it is a joke? Mm. And um, so y'all went to the meeting and um, what, what was the conclusion? What kind of boys are they? Big boys? What oh, classroom? Four and five and I think it's about five or six of them. Of um, summer farm five, maybe one is a farm four. My son is farm one. There were people in the school that informed me those things in that school are practices. But I wanted to know. With me, it's a fucking my practice. Is a temperance rape? It is a my practice because it is normal for them. And and somebody what alleged mean? somebody alleged that the parents of these children yes, this donate this donate stuff. So the teacher, because even one teacher, one one child, one of the children, one of the child onto the set, he was hiding. Anyway, the poor children outside. What they were saying did not resonate with me. I was not pleased. I saw no remorse from the teachers, from some of the teachers, may I be specific. From some of the teachers, there were no remorse. And from some of the parents, there were none. The children that are involved, excluding the victim, were laughing. Laughing at the meat. Laughing! My God. Once, and one particular one said, y'all don't laugh, let me laugh. Wow. When I confronted him, he said, he don't say that. To say, to tell him, don't let the teacher them think like if it's not serious. This is what the child So in front of the teachers the in this meeting. Monica, hide one of the child. When I came up out of the corridor because I was so upset, I came out of the meeting. And I come and I was coming outside. My son said, Mommy, look one of the boys. This is the one that pulled on the zipper and told me. Mm -hmm. And told me that um you want to see how gear I could get. So he, he pulled on your son pa, and zip yeah. and asked your son if you saw yeah. why he showed your gay kid. Yes. Get. Oh, jeez. You. Yes. So when I look at him, all smiles as if this thing is a joke. So I went to him and I shot him. As a joke, you see. So they're joking and I'm joking. 
The same thing, you know, I left because I said, I'm going to the police station and make a report. Because you know what? They're taking this thing like clean. The same teacher, I was later informed when I went over to the police station. She told the parents. She's the one who would tell me nothing. If Veronica came come to say nothing, but when to tell the parents, go and make a report for me because I chuck you up. As a parent receiving the news, you could tell me how to react. Could you tell me how to react? Eh? But you are so concerned about your sponsors. Eh? This so is I, in Joseph I am the high pass. I am the high pass. What kind of boys is what kind of children? Indian boys. Oh no. All Indian. Oh no, no, no. My son is the only black child. Oh no, no. And the victim. And you said that somebody seen you come and was even sending home your son like, like, like suspending we your son? Over, we went to the uh, police station to tell me it has to go through a stage. They sent us back to break down, um, 68 breakdown to see our welfare. We were later interviewed by Miss. Abigail, I can't remember her surname. And she goes through everything. She interviewed every, all the children. She eventually allowed the parents, she gave the parents the opportunity to speak. Why is he even speaking to the children? They're laughing. Mm. When it was my turn to stand up, I told her, I said, you see the children laughing? She said, yes, she see it. She saw them laughing. She was supposed to do the intervention, and when she do the intervention, she's gonna take all the report that all the children have to write statement. So when she goes this, no, she has to write this report. She says she found the children guilty, and her recommendation is for expulsion. She said, but that is just her recommendation. She still has to report to a superior. The superior later come in. Don't know the first name, but I will never forget Bridgewater. This is the last name. Did not look at the report, but right away said if the boys tell the truth. Wow. After investigation was done the day before, and you come and sit and listen yet, mm. and you don't come to a conclusion that they're lying. Bridgewater. Bridgewater. He was there. Yes. Like he was, so he was, you went to the time. And then the, the victim had to see, he said, let the victim go home too. Wow. For the whole week. Wow. So you son. Until they investigated. My son, who has to be disenfranchised from a work, from a week's work. You think that is fair? Hmm. Then when I yeah. get up and spoke for myself, then ask mom, you want the son to go back. I said, I gotta ask you for my son to go back to school. Eh? Me son who's the victim, I gotta ask you for he go back to school. You think that's fair? Eh? Because it's donors to the school children involved. Yes. Mm. Well, you know, and this is what they didn't want to do. Come to the media. No, but I mean, it's your child. So, I'm the, the only reason I'm so, not showing so, your face is because you're freaking out, and I could understand your so condition and you're devastated. So I'm supposed to sit back and be relaxed with something like this. You think that is fair, Miss Bruce? No, no, no. You think that no, is no, fair? No, not at all. I say it publicly, nope. And I'm happy. Come be me, child. You can tell me. I do not want to be identified. I will never ever identify nobody. Because they're afraid to say anything. But I am afraid because nobody is gonna silence me. Nobody ain't gonna do it. Somebody say Emmanuel Bridgewater is really Nobody ain't gonna silence me. Mm. Even if I have to do it on my own, I will do it on my own. But it's your son, you gotta fight. I agree with you. The district, the violated the rights of your child and you. That is a violation. You know how that boy feel. Now you gonna you know take you out of school. My son, my son said, "Mommy, I am so hurt." Wow. He said, "Mommy, I'm so hurt." And you know, you know, I am so hurt for my child because you know, my child has been attacked, and my child has to debate with himself mm. if I should fight back. Or say this one out because if you fight back, they could overpower you. Mm. Use one of them is five or six. And you for the push in the toilet, close the door. And, and all, the this, door. all this, all this the all teacher this saying is joke. This is a joke. This is a joke. <laughs> Eight butterfly sea moss powder. Take your daily routine to the next level. Natural vegan superfood powder. 
essential multivitamin powder made just for you. They indeed got problems with this question about household. We are going to be giving, as I suggested on Thursday morning on Camps TV, $100,000 to Guyanese residents, Guyanese adult Guyanese residents. That is easier. Because first of all, here's the advantages of doing that. One, you got a problem. You don't have to have a problem anymore about defining households. Because a lot of people think a house is a household. Is that true? A house is not a household. And you don't go around and say, well, look, I passed the house and so on. Or I, I finished with that house. You might finish with that house. But you, don't, you have not finished with the household. Dr. Thomas ran two things that I'm telling you, apart from writing papers at the university. Globe Trust and that institution failed, went into bankruptcy. He was heading that, the board. And Gaisuko, they put him to head Gaisuko and the APNU, and 7,000 people got sent home. Those are the two things that I'll judge you on whether you can do things, not to write pieces of paper and make wild promises. Can you actually manage things? And so he had said something in the past. So I, I hope that um, Jason sent me this stuff. Mm -mm. Yeah, my a couple morning ago, critics come on the live. Oh, we found the culprit. We know who given, you know, he's called me smelly smell. We know who given smelly smell her information on this government. Could you believe the traitor is one of the own just because he wants to be president and this and the and critics come on the live. Y'all know it's Nandalal, they say. Giving me poor Nandalal. Anyway, y'all kill Nandalal. Me really kill. <laughs> Hello. Yes, is he. Nandalal, tell them it's you give me the secrets. Yes, yes, it's Nandalal. Y'all, please.